Professor Milk. Oh. Hello, class. You may be wondering why I'm posting this poppy guide, as I usually wait about two months between each video to completely and intentionally, of course, neglect my audience. After all, why do I make these guides? Why do I put so much work into them? And why do I slave over a hot keyboard and mouse just so you guys can experience quality kinetic typography? Is it because I want to open your eyes to new, off-meta, non-cookie-cutter ways of playing the game to further your critical thinking? Is it because I want to teach you guys that you don't have to live in the small equilateral cubicle box that everyone and their mother is conformed to that consists of copying pro player strategies by giving you a new perspective through satirical comedy? No, it's so I can finally build the interior your swimming pool slash in-home theater I've always wanted using my YouTube money. This is America, folks. I don't have time for a real job. I'm an internet celebrity with like 39 subscribers and double-digit view counts on my Twitch stream. But alas, I digress. Now that I've got you here, we might as well learn a thing or two. Thank you for joining me in Poppy, the practical 1v5. I'm Professor Milk. Let's get started. A lot of people claim they know how Poppy works, but there's more to her than meets the eye. Let us take a journey through her abilities so we can fully understand the finer intricacies of the only champion that has more content out there on the Rule 34 League page than Sona and Ari combined. Q. Devastating Blow This ability feels like something Riot would include on a new champion, like Kalista, Echo, Tom Kench, or Kalista, as it has weird interactions that almost seem desperate for creativity. That and it does percent maximum health as damage. Poppy's Q makes her next basic attack deal 15% of the target's maximum HP as magic damage and converts your basic attack into magic damage as well. We'll talk about this ability a lot more later. W. Paragon of Demacia Passively, anytime Poppy attacks or gets attacked, she gains bonus armor and attack damage, stacking up to 10 times, giving a maximum of 75 armor and 100 AD at level 5. When using the ability, Poppy gains all 10 stacks of the passive and gains 30% move speed for 8 seconds. E. Heroic Charge This spell works very similar to one of Vayne's abilities, her W, Silver Bolts, as they both do damage to minions and champions. Poppy's E can be used in 5 ways. 2. To Gap Close 1. To ass ram your target face down into the wall causing bonus damage and a stun. 4. To Escape, not recommended. 3. To Outplay Lee Sin's Dragon Rage. And lastly, 5. To Ward Jump. R. Diplomatic Immunity Poppy places a golden shield of unQSSable Cancer on her target, increasing damage dealt to that target by 40%, and blocks all auto attacks and spells from other champions during the duration. Finally, Poppy's passive, Valiant Fighter. If Poppy takes damage that will deal more than 10% of her current HP, the spell or auto attack is completely blocked, dealing no damage. This works very well against burst heroes. Almost equally as mysterious as Poppy's abilities are the items you build on her. Do you go tank, bruiser, AD, AP? Not even our lord and savior Rito Games has the answer to such a question. People will say almost anything is possible, and with Poppy, you should just live your dreams. But I'm from NA, so there's roughly a 0 out of 10 chance that I'll let you guys bank on dreaming. I've found one build that works better than pretty much every other build out there. Let's muse over some of the other builds commoners use. Then, let's analyze my high-performing build. We have the classic, the jugger pop, useless, trolling, and the milk build. For now, we must break the inertia of flowing knowledge with a bit of friction brought to you by professional players' takes on my build to help analyze and break down information with a rare, very rare chance of comedy. This is a segment I like to call Wise Words from the Pros. Our first guest isn't necessarily a pro or even a retired pro, but he's known for his fast reaction time, extremely high skill cap champion pool, and for having one of the most action-packed streams out there that will keep you alert and wide awake the whole time. Almost every game he builds Majais and Sword of the Occult and tries to get as many stacks as possible before he loses. Please welcome Sir HC Easy. At a rate of $2 per question, we ask him. Hello Sir Easy, you mostly play Nasus, Cinch, Terror, and have only dabbled with Poppy. But I feel you're qualified enough to review my Poppy build. It's Triforce, IE, PD, PD, CDR boots, and a gun blade. I'd love some feedback. He responds, Triforce, Infinity Edge, Phantom Dancer, Phantom Dancer, CDR Boots, and a Gunblade. What the freak? I guess, dude, that's a lot. Of... Yeah, that works. But, you know what's better? Trinity Force, Blade of the Rune King, Titanic Hydra, Dead Man's Plate, CDR Boots, and a side of Captain Pride.
It's the only build that allows you to turn into this. Like, come on now. Look, Sir Easy, I appreciate you trying to craft your own build, but please, leave that to the professionals. We're here for a reason. Look guys, I try to get this clown to review my build that I've worked oh so hard on, and all he does is ignore it, turn around, and pitch me his own half-thought-out mediocre build. Classic all-American capitalism strikes again. Regardless, thank you for your sales pitch, but I must move on. Our next guest is breaking records. He's the only one so far to be included in wise words from the pros for a second time. A retired pro who unanimously won the best 80 carry who ever lived award seasons one through five. A man that even in the worst of juggernaut times is still a dirty, dirty Lucian picker. I'm only sub to him for the emotes. Please welcome our returning guest, Michael, I'm a cutie pie, Santana. At $4.20 per question, we ask him. See, Professor Milk, hello, I'm a cutie pie. Last time I asked you a question, you shared, you sharded the bed. Here's your second and potentially last chance. Please review my poppy build. Triforce, IE, PD, PD, CDR, boots, and a gun blade. He responds. That doesn't sound bad. Yeah, that build is fun. You can build poppy. On it, it, it really doesn't matter how what items you put on pop. You could fucking put like ta you could build tank like hybrid AP fucking attack speed poppy, and she probably still kill everything. Poppy's problem isn't her builds. Her problem is getting the items. That build's actually not that bad though. Like that's the build that I used to get on poppy. I have a lot of fucking poppy games too. It's some YouTube shit. Yeah, like that build, I don't know if that's supposed to be a troll build or not, but it's actually really fucking good. Like that's pretty much the poppy build most people go. Okay, okay, okay. First, according to my sources, this isn't the build that most players use because most players build Bork, Ghostblade, and then lose before the late game hits, but that's because they're terrible at the game. Which brings me to my second point. Yes, the build is expensive, but that's completely fine if you don't crap your pants and feed every single game, as dying, surprisingly enough, doesn't give you or your team much gold. 80 carries have expensive builds, and they're doing just fine in the current meta. We then ask the self-proclaimed Season 1-5 through 5 MVP, Why can't Poppy get to late game? Cause she's easily ganked. She has a lot of downsides. She's easily ganked. She's melee. She has to commit to an all-in to deal damage. I guess this all falls into easily ganked. She's easily ganked and doesn't have good wave clear. So, he doesn't have a lot going for her. Look, a lot of champions are easily ganked, but that doesn't make the champion bad. It means the player is probably playing with duct tape over his minimap. Common mistake, folks. That's like saying Ari sucks because it's difficult to land her charms. She doesn't suck at all, guys, and your ping is just fine. Yeah, dude, like, if you can get Poppy through her early game, you honestly don't have to give a shit what you're building. Like, if you're good enough to get Poppy through her early game, build whatever the fuck you want, dude. You want to build a fucking Dervish Blade? Go for it, dude. You want to build Zephyr on Poppy? Go ahead. Nash is too is more power to you. You just have to be able to get through her early game. Again, Jesus, please leave the build creation to me. I don't have a PhD in theory crafting for nothing, but I'd like to thank Mr. Santana for his time, and I appreciate him giving me a solid answer, as opposed to our last interview, where he almost got his ass muted. No, that's garbage. I'd like to take this moment to fully cover why this build works and what it offers the player and their team. Let's first go over some pleb information. Masteries. We'll be running 30-0-0 because Poppy's passive and Paragon of Demacia stacks are enough to not need anything from the defensive tree. Runes. Crit damage reds, yellows, and quints, with CDR per level blues. Build order. For laning, start flask and build accordingly, fitting in a vamp scepter whenever you feel it's necessary. For jungle, build up to trailblazer without finishing the full item, then build as prescribed. Now why does this build work? It's a very similar setup to the Zed build I created, but works in a drastically different way, revolving around Poppy's Q. If you see a build like this one, naturally you build tons of armor with a Thornmail. But the problem is, Poppy's Q turns her whole auto attack, including the modified crit damage, into magic damage. This makes your Q 
which is up every three seconds because of your CDR boots and runes, deal in the ballpark of 2,000 damage when using your ultimate every single time due to the 100% crit chance. So instead of two or three shotting people like the video that was recently on Reddit claiming to be the real poppy guide, with clips from 1985 BCE, you'll be guaranteed to one-shot every single time with your Q. This will let you rip through entire teams 1v5ing in any elo. Let's just take a moment to appreciate how much of a genius I really am. Now, before you say that this build is good, try it out for yourself so you know it's good. However, if you try my build and you decide that it's terrible, come over to my stream at twitch.tv slash professor underscore milk and you can bang my wife. But until next time, thank you very much for watching, good luck in solo queue, and have a wonderful day. Professor Milk. Oh.